Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to talk about this DIY or baseline level or beginners tool bag setup or tool bag loadout. You see here I have the Vito Pro Pack Tech Series bag, the Tech MCT bag, and of course the MC talks about the size of this base plastic bottom on the bag, and the T means it's a taller bag. And that means it can take taller tools. You can see here they can accommodate 12 inch tools comfortably. So we're just gonna quickly go around this bag. So we we'll start here on this side. Here we got a pair of mechanics gloves. I like these gloves because there's no strap at the top. So you can just slip your hand in them and you're good to go. I've got these little, I'll have a link to all these things in the description, but I have uh, these glove clips here that you can just clip the gloves and attach them or detach them or whatever you wanna clip there. This guy clips on the D-ring here that retains the gloves. Uh, what do we have here? We have a 16 foot Kamalon tape measure. It's a nice tape measure, rel relatively inexpensive. Uh, one thing I like about it is you can see that it shows you the fractional measurements on the tape. Not that we don't know what those fractions are, but it just helps you see them and make sure that you can double check yourself and you're right. I've got a Milwaukee compact fastback uh, utility knife here. So you can see we have that guy in there. It fits really good in this pocket. That's why I like it there. Uh, here we have a non-contact voltage tester. This is a Volt Alert from Fluke. You turn it on, go over here and you can see that it detects the electromagnetic field of electricity and it can tell you if something's hot or not. It's just a quick check, not something you want to bet your life on, of course. We flip around to the other side. You can see I have some Teflon tape for plumbing. Uh, we got some electrical tape here. This is a Scotch number 33 tape, so it's a higher quality, thicker tape. Flashlight, I've got an O-Light. Any O-Light flashlight would be great here, but this happens to be the S2R Baton 2. Fits really nicely in the pocket. I've got a Klein 4-in-1 screwdriver here. Okay, nice compact screwdriver or thermostat screwdriver. You can see it's got the flip bits in it. You can flip it around, get your different size bits. So I can go to a smaller Phillips bit there. Of course, I got flat there. Flip it back, we got a larger Phillips and a small flat there. Fits really good in the pocket here. Next up, we have a Sharpie marker. Of course, that always comes in handy. This happens to be a Bic marker, but yeah, Sharpie marker right there. And let's look at the bag here. Now, this is the front of the bag where Vito's logo is. That's what Vito calls the front of the bag. And you see you have these two small zipper pockets here. And you got a couple of D-rings as well. Not really a lot you can do with these pockets. I have them both empty, but you could put business cards up here or hang something off the bag, like a tool pouch or something like that. But I don't have anything in there. Really with this bag, what I'm going for is sort of a minimalist, just a baseline amount of tools that you might have. The bag weighs about 20 pounds. So we're really going for just a base load out here. This isn't going to have everything you're going to need in it. So we open the tool bag. You can see we have an assortment of tools here. I'm going to start off with this S-Wing 16 ounce hammer. Nice hammer, uh, fits in here really well in the bag. You can just put this guy in here, put the handle in, turn it. You can see it fits nicely there at the top. A lot of people have trouble fitting these uh, hammers in the bag. A lot of folks want to put the hammer here in the D-ring. You can do that. You can see I can put it in this D-ring on the side of the bag, but it does strike at the bottom, right? So it hits the table there, but it, it could ride there. You could do it but I want the tools out of the way in the bag and you can see it fits right in there. That's the way to go, I think, for this tool. One thing I'm trying to do here is keep as few tools on the outside of this bag as possible. Just that way it, it, it travels better. It can be moved I and mean, taken in and out of the vehicle better, that sort of thing. So I want the tools inside. Plus, one thing I've learned with these tool bags is if they completely zip up and shut entirely, that your tools are much less likely to corrode. Uh, this MC, for example, is the base, like I said earlier, that it refers to of the bag. Well, they make this in an open top bag. Now, if you run that open top bag, you're gonna find your tools corrode a lot more, um, pick up corrosion from humidity, et cetera, than they do in this fully enclosed bag. So that's one of the, that's really one of the reasons I like a closed bag. Plus you don't get sawdust or any kind of dirt, as much dirt going in here. One thing I wanna show real quick is you see there's a button here on this flap. You can take this button and you can snap that and you can pull these two zippers up and run the bag like this or you can pull your zippers down and you know let it hang down there a little bit more so that's that design it's one of the nice features of this bag so really quick going through here you can see I have a pair of lineman's pliers here always handy to have these are a pair of klein hd 213 lineman's pliers excellent pair of lineman pliers i like uh, klein lineman pliers uh, here we have a pair of knipex cobra pliers 10 inch Okay, the number is uh, 8701250. The 250 is the millimeters. That means that uh, in length, that means these are 10 inches in length. If you convert that to standard or SAE, but you can just push this button 
and adjust these. I think we most folks have seen those somewhere. There's plenty out there about that. These are this is an adjustable wrench here made by Baco, the 9031 model of wrench. This is the chrome version. So it's completely dipped in chrome. Um, Snap-on sells the same wrench. It's much more expensive. This guy is a third of the cost of the Snap-on wrench, and I'll have a link to it in the description, but you can see here, you can adjust it very quickly. It's got nice thin jaws, excellent wrench to have on you. Uh, again, that's a Baco 8 inch adjustable wrench. What else we have here? I have a Klein 11 and one impact. All right, so this is a, like all a Klein 11 and ones. You have multiple tools in here, 11 tools. This is a 5 16 driver. You can see we've got Phillips here. It's got the flip bit style. I got a quarter inch uh, uh, flat bit there. Of course, the whole shank comes out, flip it around, and you've got a bit driver here that can drive any bit that you want. So that, that, that comes in very handy. So that's the Klein Tools uh, Impact 11 and one. What else we have? I have a Klein Tools uh, long shank screwdriver here made in the USA. I like this because I can pull this down and extend this shank out. As, as far as you want. It's got a line right here, you'll see. Uh, it's got a, a maximum amount you can extend it out. So if you adjust it there, I, I push it out to slide it in. I push down on this color to, to extend it out. If I adjust it right there, now you see I have a long shank Phillips screwdriver. Well, let's say you need flat. Okay, well, I'm gonna push it down, pull it out, push that collet up, slip it in. Now I've got a flat bit screwdriver and I can adjust again to whatever length that I want for this driver. And it also doubles as a driver for a lot of different bits but I can use this as a driver and I can drive hex bits. So for example, I can take out this Milwaukee quarter inch hex bit or one inch bit driver and I can just pop that in there. And now, you know, I've got a quarter inch bit driver here. So that's what I like about this tool. It's very versatile, a lot of options with this handle. All right, what else do we have? I have a pair of uh, seven and a quarter inch Kendipex pliers here. You can see they're the 8701 180s, the 180s, the millimeters, of course. Seven inch pair of Cobra, it's just nice to have a smaller pair to fit in the tight places. Along with that, I happen to have a Pittsburgh Pro 6 inch adjustable wrench in here and uh, works great. It counters the, uh, you know, these two together are designed to kind of work together. All right. And so is that Baco along with the 10 inch Cobra pliers. That's the idea is that they're, they complement each other. What else do I have? I got a Tecton made in the USA mechanics pick in here. Very handy, nice little handle on it. I've got a Icon mini ratchet and bit set here. Just slide this guy over. You can see you have a, a mini ratchet in the bag. So that's another thing about this flap. You can kind of use it as a shelf. So I can grab this mini ratchet here, pop it out. This is an extension, right, for the mini ratchet. Pop it in there. I can pull out any one of these hex bits. Say I want to drive this Torx bit there. So a full uh, ratchet set here. It also has a driver in it that allows you to drive sockets right here in the, in the set. So excellent set to have, super handy. Gives you a lot of the bits that you need in the bag and just one set. So it answers the question of, hey, do I have enough bits in here? Well, yeah, you've got a bunch of torques here. These are security torques, but that works with regular torques as well. So you got a good assortment of torques bits all the way down to these small ones. You got a flat, a small, a big and a small flat screwdriver. Uh, you come down here and you have an assortment of uh, hex bits, metric. And then if we look here, these are standard. They even put, there's not many here, okay, but you're not gonna have many hex standard anyway. But right here we got four hex bits that are standard and of course some Phillips sizes and you know it's an excellent assortment of bits to have in a bag like this where you're trying to carry as few things as possible so really works out well. What else we got? I got a couple of bit rails here from Makita. This is their uh, 3 8 uh, sockets. They're impact rated and you can see here if I pick them up pull them up there you can see they're etched in there that's an 18 millimeter Makita socket there so we have these guys in here and of course these are great because I can use this ratchet with these sockets and I can pull out this three inch extension I have here right and now I can take in and drive any of these sockets now it's not a full socket set there's some skips in here and so on at least with the metric but the nice thing is you have some sockets on you and you can use it with this ratchet and you know you get that kind of flexibility. So just a nice small pair headed Craftsman ratchets what this happens to be, but you could put anything in the bag. Three inch extension here, but we're working in three eighths is all we've got here. And everything is three eighths in the bag. What else do I have? I have a stubby screwdriver here from Klein. It's a multi-bit stubby and it's nice and short. You, know, you pull it out, it's a flip bit style screwdriver. Stubby, it's good when you need it. And I always like to keep a small screwdriver in the bag of some sort. It's an excellent, just flat, screwdriver. I find it comes in handy for something almost always. If you don't have it, you'll start to want it, right? 
got a, a flexible putty knife here. Okay, this comes in handy. By flexible, you can see here, it's got a flexible piece of steel on it, right? They make them in firm and flexible. Here's a, a firm one, right? Same exact make a putty knife, but this guy is, is firm. Well, I like the flexible better for this bag, especially if you're working with mud or something. The flex is what I prefer to, prefer to carry in the bag. What else I've got? A pair of flush cutters here. These happen to be crescents, but I really like the Klein flush cutters, and I'll have a link to those in the description. Uh, what else? I've got a just a, a screw catch here, magnet. All right, this one happens to be Craftsman, but you know it doesn't have to be. It's just what I happen to have. And I've got a uh, quarter inch bit driver here. Now this is for those sockets we just talked about. So if I can take take one of these sockets off, and now you see I have a quarter inch adapter for your impact, right? We can come back to that later. Got a five in one here from Hyde. Excellent to, sc to scrape anything. It was mower decks or any kind of dirty work you want to do. This thing is great. Uh, clean out paint rollers with this curve. Uh, very stiff. I just find it's great for something that's really dirty and really just rough stuff that you're, you're trying to clean up. It's really handy for that. Got a pair of Milwaukee long nose pliers in the bag. Very handy. Nice set of grips on these. So need, a, need some kind of long nose pliers for sure. Got a pair of Milwaukee six in one wire strippers. Uh, nice and compact is what I like about these for this particular bag, right? It fits in the bag. It's small. Uh, the handle's nice and short. Great grips. This is an excellent pair of uh, wire strippers uh, in its own right. So fits in the bag. Great. Great pair of strippers. What else do I have? I got a uh, plastic razor blade knife here or scraper. These are extra handy. I tell you, if you're trying to work on something, scraping paint or whatever, and you don't want to damage what you're working on, this will help save you from damaging what you're working on. Plus, it's not nearly as sharp to cut yourself and just very inexpensive, something extra to have in the bag. Here, I've got a, uh, a quarter inch adapter, and we'll talk about that here more in a minute. I've got some drill bits here, just to, just three short drill bits here, usually to do pilot holes or, you know, it's just to have some sort of drill bits in the bag. But, you know, whatever the need is, it's just good to have some kind of uh, drill bits in the bag. And if you need more, the whole idea of this bag is you need more, you're going to bring it with you, you're going to grab it. Got a brass wire brush here, uh, just happened to be what I put in there. I mean, steel would be fine uh, to have in the bag, but just some kind of wire brush to have in the bag. It's got a small pencil here, marking things. Uh, here's one for really marking wood. This is more for taking notes, and this is more for marking wood. I have a... Uh, one more thing here, I have an adapter for this. So if I put this adapter on here, this is a Tekton quarter inch adapter. I can take any one of these quarter inch bits, pop them out, and if I want to, I can drive with this adapter. So just kind of a nice to have, not necessary to be in the bag, but I had an extra one, I put it in the bag. It's just handy to have with you. It gives you another option for driving your one inch hex bits. I do have these magnets on here. That's one thing I am doing with this zipper pocket is I have two of these neodymium magnets on the inside of this pocket. And what I do is I drop in one of these neodymium magnets inside the pocket, and then they attract to these ones on the outside. Why are they on here? Well, so you can throw bits out here or screws or whatever while you're working on something. Just a quick place to be able to throw things. I put a couple of magnets here, but you could put up to, you could put four, depends on how much you like using this. Now, here we go to the other side of the bag. First, I start at the zipper here at the top. I just have a couple of powdered mechanics gloves in here. Literally just two, just fits in there. In case you're doing something dirty, you want to have a couple gloves on you. Down here, all I have is a GFCI tester. And there's different brands. You know, this one, push the button to test GFCI, but it's, you can also test, you know, any receptacle with these if you're not aware. You put it in, you get a couple of yellow or orange lights, and you know the receptacle's wired correctly. So just handy to have that in the bag. All right, so here we are in this side of the bag. Now, this is the back side of the bag, according to uh, Beto. Of course, a couple D-rings back here. And here we just have different tools, but morally of the uh, battery power tools and measurement tools. So I've got a Milwaukee Impact in here, the M12. See, it's got the nice compact battery on it, so it's really handy to have. And that plays into all these items here we looked at in the front of the back, right? This Impact adapter, of course, it fits right on the Milwaukee. So I can drive sockets from this socket rail that I had. I can drive all of those sockets or the bits. See, everything's hex here, so those, those drill bits that I had fit into this uh, this impact, now it's not a drill, it's an impact, but it can be used as a drill in a pinch. Also add the hex adapter here on the other side of the bag. That fits in here, and that allows us to drive all these icon bits we looked at on the other side of the bag. So we pop it open, and see those guys fit right in here. So now, I can use this impact driver to drive these bits, right? So the idea is everything's interoperable, and everything works together. This is a Milwaukee bit that actually adds magnetism, so you can see magnetically charges this Torx bit 
with the bit holder. So it passes the magnetism down to the bit. So there's our Torx bit. But that's the idea is you have the flexibility to run this impact and use it as a drill. It's what you have in the bag. It's small and compact. Okay, you can see it just fits in there. There's adjustable, three adjustable speed settings in there. I like to keep it on two, typically three speeds. Most power is gonna come at speed three. And it's got this setting for self tapping screws right here on this side. So super handy tool to have. You just can't beat it. A lot of power too for its size. So what else do I have? I have a pair of, I don't have any scissors in here. So these are shears that you could use in lieu of scissors. And they do have slightly serrated blades on them, but I like these because it's a cross between scissors and having something that's closer to tin snips or aviation uh, shears. So it's just a, a, a tough pair of cutters to have in here. What else? I've got a right in the rain notepad. Right, that's what our pencil was for on the other side of the bag. It fits better over here is why I have it here, but you gotta have something to write on, I think. I've got a light here that, in addition to that other light, we had a light here on the outside of the bag, more of a flashlight. This one's good for under the sink or when you need the light to be stood up or put somewhere and it has to stand it, stand it up or, or reposition it. You know, it's an extra set of hands basically, you know, holding the flashlight for you, right? Or you can hang this flashlight. That's why I've got this Klein Tools light in here and it also gives us USB charging for your smartphone. So it acts as a battery bank. So now you have a battery bank on the bag and it charges up. This one charges up micro USB. If I hit this button or hold a button down momentarily, it tells me what the charge level is. Of course, it turns the light on. It's got two brightness settings. Starts off on bright, goes to a dimmer setting. This is just a great light. It's also got this little sort of carabiner style clip here so you can hang it on some wire or whatever you want to hang it on. You can just break in and have this hook available to you to hang the light. It's magnetic here. Now, one thing I've done on this light is I've put vinyl tape here or electrician's tape on here. Why? Because it has open magnets that attract little bits of metal and so on. So when you go to use, use this light the first time, it works fine maybe. But after that, you go to use it, you'll find shavings are on here. And when you put it on a smooth or clean surface, like on this side, right? You put it down, it could scratch the surface. That's why I have the tape on here because the, the, these magnets should really be enclosed. So wrap it with some vinyl tape and you'll find when you go to use it in the future, you'll thank yourself because it's easier to clean shavings off and it's not going to scratch up something, a delicate or sensitive surface or a painted surface that you put it on when you're using that magnet. So just something to be aware of and just illustrate that magnet there real quick. So it does have a magnet right there on the handle. So excellent light from Klein, folds up very compact. Here's a uh, inspection mirror, happens to be an extra one I had telescopic of course this one has a light on it but i don't really care for that because the battery is always going dead so i prefer you know just take this piece of plastic and pop it off and just use it as an inspection mirror what else do i have for this impact we've got malco bit here we can just pop right in and now we have uh, on the end of this driver we have a quarter inch bit what i like about malco is you can just pull the bit off flip it around and now we have a 5 16th bit which is really common on appliances and you know it's super handy as i said earlier you can take this bit and it'll still work with this klein screwdriver handle that we have it'll clip in there and you can use it now you have a man the ability to manually turn quarter inch and five sixteenths so that's really handy i'm just going to put that back in there and now i always like to have one of these six inch milwaukee extensions super handy it's got the C clip at the top that does a great job of bit retention. Really handy to have this exact size. Sometimes you get into a reach situation where this head of this driver is in the way, and this solves that. What else do we have? I uh, got a torpedo level here. This happens to be a Johnson's torpedo level, but Empire makes one. Lots of companies do. I'll have a link to one. Got a magnet on one side so it can magnetically attach. You can see there, I just stuck it on that wrench there. Magnet on that side, it's a metal. On this side, just some way to have a decent level one U. I have a 10 inch extension here. It's for that Craftsman 3 8 ratchet. So we can get extension on those bits we were driving earlier, right? You're going to find there's times when the only way you need to do or get to what you need to is to have this reach. I have this multimeter in here. Now, if I hold this red button down, it turns on. And then I tap this button on the front, you'll find it's also a non-contact voltage tester. So I can take it over here, put it by this electrical wire. It's sensing that electromagnetic field, just like that fluke uh, non-contact voltage tester was here on the side. But the great thing about this meter is I can tap this red button, switch it back to auto, pull out a wire lead, put it right here in the back, and now I've got a full-blown multimeter. And again, this bag is designed to be compact. It, you can have a better meter, maybe you keep a better meter on the truck, keep a better meter in your other bag, but the idea is this is the meter you have with you. Great for testing car batteries or checking a receptacle quickly. Any situation you're in where you need to voltage check real quick or you want to see if something's charging, it just comes in ultra handy for that. And you could test voltage very quickly with this. So if I pop these ends off, just pop off this red end, expose the probe, 
pop that off, expose the probe. I can now take this, hook it up, automatically detects that it's AC voltage, gives me a voltage rating. There's 122 volts on auto. Or like I said earlier, switch it to non-contact voltage, get it on the hot side of the wire, or I can tap it again and go to live test, and it'll tell me which side is hot, if it's live or not. So just an excellent, compact, convenient multimeter for you, right? Hold the button down, it turns off. Just can't beat it to have something on you at all times. It doesn't take up a lot of space. This isn't a bag where you're going to have everything in it. Now, I pull this out. There's a pair of Carhartt safety glasses. These rated really well. I like the way they fit. They're not too expensive. Up here, we've got some Band-Aids. I just reused this travel pack. You can buy this at any store, really. And I just refill this travel pack to have something handy in case you cut yourself. Bound to happen. This is just a terry cloth. Throw whatever kind of cloth you want in here. But I find it's good to have some kind of cloth on you. You end up needing it at some point. All right, so that's it. That's everything in the bag. And again, the whole idea behind this bag is to have the bare minimum amount of tools that you need. This is, again, like a baseline set of tools, good for DIY, good for someone's first time tool bag. If you're looking to put that together and have a base level of tools to do most jobs, like replace a receptacle, replace your kitchen sink, maybe work on your water heater, things like that, that you can do the basic tasks you need to do. If you need more tools, you go and get them. But the idea is you come in and you can pretty much handle or tackle most things with this bag. So uh, I'll have a link to all the items we talked about here today in the description. And please remember to like and subscribe. Those actions help me to continue to bring content to you on this channel. And with that said, I'll see you in the next video.